Welcome to our virtual control room. You're about to begin a guided tour through the world of hydrogen peroxide. During the journey, you'll find out what it is, how it reacts, and most important of all, how to handle it properly. At the end of your tour, you'll know a lot more about ensuring the safety of everyone who uses hydrogen peroxide. You'll also find out about the things you can do to keep your plant working safely. Some of the things we'll show you in this presentation may surprise you. You'll probably be glad this control room exists only in your imagination. But just remember, you'll soon be back in the real world handling hydrogen peroxide yourself. Just remember the do's and don'ts in this tour and you'll be as safe out there as you are in here. And that's not just a promise, it's a fact. By the way, everything in this control room is fully automatic. Your thoughts can even move your seat. Now please look at the screen on the right. What is hydrogen peroxide? It's a naturally occurring substance used throughout the world in industry and in the home. It's both safe and powerful, very powerful. It looks just like water. In fact, one of its great benefits is that it breaks down into oxygen and water, both of which are essential for our environment. On the next screen, you'll be invited to learn more about hydrogen peroxide concentrations and what they're used for. Here we go. This is pure hydrogen peroxide. A hundred percent concentration is never produced. When you come across hydrogen peroxide at work, it'll be in diluted form, mixed with pure water. The concentrations you work with can vary and are normally in the range of 35 to 70 percent. Even lower concentrations are sometimes used, right down to just 2 percent. But for most of the time, the product is sold at medium strength. No matter what the concentration, the uses of hydrogen peroxide are numerous. Here are a few examples. It's used to bleach textiles and paper. Its antiseptic properties provide disinfection for food packaging. Solvay Interox Ultra Pure Hydrogen Peroxide is also used in the semiconductor industry to make both silicon wafers and microchips. Businesses in many sectors, including water companies, rely on it for the safe treatment of liquid effluent. And in some industries, it's used for cleaning up gaseous emissions. At very high strength, hydrogen peroxide has even been used as a component of rocket fuel. But you'll also find hydrogen peroxide in much more down-to-earth applications. At home, it's used to bleach and clean clothes in the washing machine. And very dilute pharmaceutical grades are available to help keep us clean and looking beautiful and healthy. It's difficult to imagine another product with such a wide range of uses. That's why over a million tons of hydrogen peroxide are safely used every year. Which brings us to the next questions. What are the main characteristics of hydrogen peroxide? And what are the potential hazards if it's not handled properly? This is really the heart of the matter. To start with, here are two words you should always keep in mind when working with hydrogen peroxide. Heat and pressure. Let's discuss heat first. One characteristic of hydrogen peroxide is that it's not held together very strongly. Even in its most dilute form, it very slowly decomposes back into water and oxygen. This process generates heat and it cannot be halted. When hydrogen peroxide is treated properly, the amount of heat produced is very small and easily dissipated. There is also a slight loss of concentration, but this is commercially insignificant, amounting to less than 1% a year. But if not treated well, hydrogen peroxide will start to decompose in a very fast and much more dramatic way, producing huge amounts of heat. This, in turn, will cause it to decompose even faster, and, as you can guess, produce more heat along the way. The whole process can spiral on from there, with the hydrogen peroxide boiling away to produce huge volumes of oxygen and steam very quickly. And that's where pressure comes in. Trapped in an enclosed space, the released oxygen can build up enormous pressure. 
A 35% solution produces several hundred times its own volume of oxygen and steam in just a minute or two. The more concentrated the solution, the greater the amount of steam and oxygen release. If this happens, there's only one rule you should follow. Keep away. Of course, we want to be sure that things will never reach this critical stage. And with the right precautions, we can ensure that hydrogen peroxide remains a reliable and useful business partner. So how do we ensure that it can be stored and used safely? In order to ensure against a potentially dangerous pressure buildup, we need specially designed equipment. Small breathers or safety valves must be fitted wherever hydrogen peroxide is present. Because if oxygen is not allowed to vent, the consequences can be quite dramatic. Large storage vessels have been known to burst, just like this. If uncontrolled decomposition occurs, breathers designed for normal gassing are just not big enough. That's why pressure and vacuum vessels containing hydrogen peroxide must be fitted with emergency reliefs. Storage tanks must always be fitted with one or more large vents. These are covered with freely lifting lids which allow gas and steam out and stop alien substances from getting in. This brings us to the next step in our virtual tour. What are these alien substances? And how can they trigger off hydrogen peroxide into uncontrollable decomposition? The decomposition of hydrogen peroxide can be triggered by contact with incompatible materials, our so-called alien substances, which are in fact quite ordinary. Many everyday plant materials are guaranteed to decompose hydrogen peroxide, for example, mild steel, brass, copper, lead, galvanized steel. So, don't ever use equipment made of incompatible materials with hydrogen peroxide. But it's not just incompatible plant materials we need to look out for. Simple, everyday things like spectacles, pens, calculators, torches, rust and dirt can also cause potentially dangerous situations when they come into contact with hydrogen peroxide. A small coin inadvertently dropped is known to have decomposed a 20-ton tank of hydrogen peroxide. So, do be careful not to lose any personal possessions or leave any tools lying around near hydrogen peroxide. Our list of incompatible materials includes liquids as well as solid objects or materials. Small amounts of alkalis like caustic soda or ammonia solution offer an equal threat. Metal salts like copper sulfate or iron chloride also decompose hydrogen peroxide, so do strong acids. So do be fully aware of the kind of chemicals you bring into contact with hydrogen peroxide. Another potentially incompatible material is one that would seem to raise least suspicion, tap water. Certain contaminants can cause decomposition at very low concentrations, so low in fact that even normal tap water may not be pure enough to dilute hydrogen peroxide. So do check the compatibility of your tap water or consult Solvay Interox. And don't rely on visual observation only. The effects can be delayed. Now let's take a look at some materials that are hydrogen peroxide friendly. The list of these friendly materials is rather short and this limits the choice of suitable construction materials. The ones usually used are aluminium and stainless steel though both need to be made inactive by chemical treatment. Certain grades of high-density polyethylene as well as chemical glassware can also be used. Do clean all materials thoroughly to remove contaminants and ensure that contact with hydrogen peroxide is safe. There's one other characteristic of hydrogen peroxide that you should note carefully. 
it is highly reactive. In particular, it's a powerful oxidizer. Although hydrogen peroxide itself does not burn, its reactive properties means that it can easily set fire to other things. Like wood, paper, rags or grass, and clothing, especially clothing. But don't be misled. Ignition is hardly ever spontaneous. Depending on the conditions, Spills of hydrogen peroxide can take many hours before the effects make themselves known. In general, the more concentrated the hydrogen peroxide, the more readily it will start a fire. But that's far from being a rule. A fire has been started within 10 minutes by a solution of just 16%. So even if dilute hydrogen peroxide is spilled on your overalls, do make sure they're well rinsed without delay. Hydrogen peroxide's reactive properties are actually its greatest benefit, so long as they're controlled. It reacts vigorously with many chemicals, such as potassium permanganate. And for concentrations of over 45%, if it's mixed with oil, alcohol or other organic materials, explosive mixtures can form. A key message is, do keep everything clean and tidy. Now, before we find out how to work with hydrogen peroxide, please move your seat to the center. Remember, this presentation is linked direct to your thought processes. Here's a summary of what we've learned so far. Remember that hydrogen peroxide constantly breaks down, giving off oxygen even under ideal conditions. Many common materials are incompatible with hydrogen peroxide. Contact with these materials can cause rapid and uncontrollable decomposition. This decomposition will in turn generate dangerous amounts of heat and pressure. Hydrogen peroxide is also a powerful oxidizer. It will readily set fire to many common materials, especially clothing. And in concentrations of over 45%, contact with organic materials can form explosive mixtures. So do avoid heat sources and keep hydrogen peroxide well away from incompatible materials. Do install appropriate breathers, valves, vents and lids on all storage tanks. And do keep anything, anywhere, clean and tidy on the plant. And then hydrogen peroxide will be the most peaceful and most useful partner to have around. End of recap. Start of the second part of the tour. So how should we work with hydrogen peroxide? How do we handle it? And how do we store it with respect for its properties and for the environment? First, here's how we handle it. Any item in the plant that's used for hydrogen peroxide must be dedicated to it 100%. The plant must be designed so that any valve or pump or other item that handles hydrogen peroxide handles nothing else. That means no other chemical in any circumstances. Clear labeling is vital. Pipes, valves, pumps and storage tanks must be kept scrupulously clean and made from compatible materials. Repairs of any equipment must be closely monitored. Only compatible and clean materials must be used. Pipe runs between valves must have vents or safety valves to relieve the routine buildup of oxygen to a safe place. Ball valves are the best type to use with hydrogen peroxide. They must have a pressure relieve hole drilled through one face of the ball. This will vent any oxygen that might build up in the body of the valve. Unused hydrogen peroxide must never be returned to its container. It may have picked up some potentially dangerous contamination. When hydrogen peroxide has to be disposed of, it must be flushed slowly down a suitable drain with plenty of water. 
Particular care must be taken to make sure that nothing drops into a tank which contains hydrogen peroxide or where it is to be stored. Remember, one misplaced coin has been known to boil off a complete tank. Spillages of hydrogen peroxide must be washed down with plenty of water. In general, anything that has come into contact with hydrogen peroxide must be thoroughly washed before disposal, storage or reuse. To learn more about correct storage, please move to the next screen. The correct storage of hydrogen peroxide is at least as vital as secure handling. It must always be labelled and stored separate from incompatible materials such as other chemicals, solvents and combustibles. Storage and work areas must be kept clean and free of debris in order to avoid any unwanted contact with hydrogen peroxide. Pallets used for hydrogen peroxide should be made from plastic. Wooden pallets should only be used if they've been fireproofed. Keep them in good condition. Damaged pallets are an unnecessary risk. Protruding nails can cause leaks. Simple spill containment walls or trays are recommended to help manage any spills or leaks. Any areas where hydrogen peroxide is stored must have a plentiful, reliable supply of water. Use it liberally to rinse anything that could have contacted hydrogen peroxide, including yourself. Remember, in case of problems, water is your best friend. All stored hydrogen peroxide must be checked regularly. A bulging container is a sure sign of pressure buildup with potential risk of leaks or even fire. When taking delivery of hydrogen peroxide, make sure that a qualified person is present and checks the delivery point. All loading points for hydrogen peroxide must be clearly labeled. By now, you probably don't need to be told of the fatal consequences if hydrogen peroxide is loaded into the wrong tank or if you load something else into a hydrogen peroxide tank. Now on to the final and probably the most important part of our tour, personal safety measures. Store this information in an easily accessible part of your brain. In case of emergency, the following safety measures will help protect you. If there's any cause for concern, don't rush into things. Use your pre-planned emergency procedures. Above all, deal with things safely. Wear full protective clothing and keep unnecessary untrained people away. The rule is, when working with hydrogen peroxide, always wear suitable protective clothing. Boots. Overalls outside the boots. Gloves, not leather ones, and approved chemical eye protection. Just imagine what hydrogen peroxide could do to your eyes. To avoid the harmful effects of the smallest splash, wash your eyes thoroughly with water over a period of 15 minutes. After that, seek medical advice urgently. If you splash hydrogen peroxide on your skin and clothing, douse them both thoroughly with water. Hydrogen peroxide confined close to the skin can release so much heat it will scorch very quickly. Plenty of water quickly applied can reduce the risk of painful and often dangerous injuries like this. If for some reason you have worked in a hydrogen peroxide tank without protection and inhaled the fumes, you must have plenty of fresh air immediately and get medical attention. You know you'd be a fool to use a pipette by mouth for medical attention. You know you'd be a fool to use a pipette by mouth. But if you think you may have swallowed hydrogen peroxide, drink water as much as you can but don't induce vomiting. Remember, in this and all cases of contact with hydrogen peroxide, seek medical help immediately. Now it's time for a final recap. You know the procedure. Storage tanks for hydrogen peroxide must be adequately vented to avoid pressure buildup. Do keep all storage areas clean and free from any materials incompatible with hydrogen peroxide. Do label all hydrogen peroxide delivery points clearly. 
do have ample supplies of water available in all areas where hydrogen peroxide is stored or used. Bunding is recommended. Do wear protective clothing in all areas where hydrogen peroxide is handled. In case of bodily contact, do douse your skin or eyes thoroughly with water. If you have swallowed hydrogen peroxide, do drink water as much as you can. In any case of contact, do seek medical attention. That's the end of this tour. By now, you know quite a lot about hydrogen peroxide and the way to work with it safely. But don't just rely on what you've seen and heard here. Read the accompanying booklet. Remember, Solvay Interox is a responsible care company.